that the rivers on the earth are actually lined out to the constellations in the cosmos and that the first languages were actually developed on those patterns. And in addition to that, the zodiac as we know it was actually, de- was a, was actually used in order to create the language. The symbols within the stars that we call the zodiac are also used to create the symbols within language, in this case, Hebrew. And then when you put all of those languages together or all those words together, then they create a specific symbol. In this case, the Megan star, which is very ancient. So now we're starting to see the connection within all of this. And I'm going to take a moment to recap so that way it all starts to really connect for you. So because sound is shape, is color, it means that every time we say something, we're literally creating a world. But the perfection in what we're saying determines whether that world comes into existence, whether that seed grows up to become a manifestation, or it becomes null and void, meaning it falls into the chasm of nothingness. And let's look at a good explanation of that here. What you'll see is, is you'll see, these are one of the more uh, older charts of antiquity, that the language, and this is of course a priest, is to be pronounced a certain kind of way in order to activate the actual tone itself. And that's done by the palatial, it's done all the way down into the chest. And because the whole purpose here is is that, see in English, English just really the top of the mouth is used. Not, and then maybe a little bit above what we would call the Adam's apple is used, but very little of the guttural tones that you see in the ancient languages. And there's a reason for this, because when you have the ancient language, you're actually speaking all the way from down deep. And then the word goes up through your passages, which would be your chakra centers, and then comes out of your mouth in full manifestation because you've now taken that word and you've pronounced it properly. So what you're seeing here is is the diagram showing that where the words are actually pronounced and how that connects with the windpipe and how that actually connects with other parts of the body. So that way when a word is pronounced in order for it to fully manifest, then it must go through the chakra centers of the being. So this lets you know right away that you have this power of being able to bring something from what we would say is the subjective plane into the physical plane. So generally that's called from inception to conception. Inception is the idea or the thought of it, right? And then so that idea and that thought starts and that's the inception. And then the conception is if you can actually birth it into a physical world. Now, remember, the process of birthing something in from the astral to the physical means that the seed or the word not only must be pronounced properly, but it must be put into the space or the environment in which it needs to grow. And that's actually the whole part of why the elements became so important, because if you were trying to accomplish something specific, then you would go into the environment that promoted that vibration and tone and nourished it properly in order for it to come to manifestation. Now, of course, today this is called magic, but there actually was no use for languages beyond this purpose, meaning that there was actually no use for speaking verbally except for to create things. So many of the life forms and many of the things that we see here in the world today were created from using the tones and vibrations that the ancestors spoke. And these tones and vibrations have been existing throughout antiquity and even before time.